episode 38, and I will be starting my reaction from the minutes and 41 second mark in 1, 0, and go! Da -na -na -na. The World Summit. I even love how epic the title sounds, too. Da -na -na -na. All right, now it's a back. I just up uh, where open Zlonia is at. She is safe. Whoa! Yo, I actually wouldn't mind seeing Lonia do all that on screen. That sounds like it'd be epic. I like it here. It's showing you that at least the Dark Army, even though, yes, most of what they've done has resulted in negative consequences with the loss of a lot of life. I like how, at the very least, it's forcing the leaders, at least the ones that are still around, to work together to face the Dark Army. I like that development. Makes sense, too, where a huge enemy will force lots of people to work together. I just hope that place is guarded up, but because of those leaders, they're going to need... Whoa! Yeah, they're going to need some protection. Yeah, the whole yay, that too. Well, I actually like that how even the nameless characters are giving Dai his credit. And I love how here it's showing you that even though, yes, Dai isn't completely human, he has saved people warming up to him. That's really damn sweet. Oh, I, oh, I feel bad for Chio. He does deserve some praise, too. But he is. I think Chiyo, if he pulls off more feats, oh, okay, that's gotta be the master then with the way the. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The voice sounded similar, and <laughs> oh, I love how he instantly changes his tone. That's kind of adorable. And it makes sense too because he knew a lot about Mam's abilities while never trapped. So that's why I knew it was going to be the teacher. I don't think he's going to shoot you out. Yeah, he did. I mean, he looks like a cool dude. I don't think he'd be set off. Yeah, look at he's even giving you some praise. At least that's the praise that our boy was looking for. True, considering Chill was the smallest, he showed off a lot of bravery. Despite the odds being against him a lot harder than the usual person. Hey, you know that's a good message there. Aww. I just would wish we'd have seen more of Lonia's Grandmaster because we didn't see a lot of the Grandmaster in comparison to, say, Avon or even oh, the Master of Pop in comparison. You know? I mean, we got small bits, but I don't think enough. I think it went a little bit faster. Ah! <laughs> uh, it would have been too dangerous to chill regardless. Chiyo is a bit mean himself, though. Yeah, I actually like Chiyo. I'm gonna say no with the way he's running all adorably. Oh, 
Yeah, he's got guts. I don't think you... I mean, at least the worst case scenario, Chia would increase morale. He could work as a decoy to mercenary tactic, too. Whoa! I mean, it's Vistavon. This guy looks like he's lurking almost everywhere. A lot of like, giving Mr. Mirror a lot of build up here. Hey, you know, I'll... that kind of looks like the regeneration takes in uh, Dragon Ball Z and the Frieza saga when you had Goku wrestling the tank right before he fights Frieza. Actually, dig it. Gives me even more Dragon Ball Z vibes. Or should I say Dragon Ball Super Vibes? But that like gives me the vibes after Goku fights some um, Captain Ginyu needs to recover. For those of you wondering specifically which one on the Frieza saga. For those of you that want a specific reference of what I'm talking about that haven't seen Dragon Ball before. Damn, I love how Handler is completely perceptive of the situation. Ain't no dumbass. As they should, especially with the chaos that the Dark Armies caused. I mean, yeah, if a lot of leaders were taken down, it would help out a lot. Ooh. What is it, just increasing the base stats of Adler? Well. Yo, I love how he's willing to give up his pride just to have a complete crack of a wrecking die. Oh yeah, I mean he's been trying to keep him on to that body and he hasn't been working against Dying Company. Now Dying's a lot more stronger. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, that is some conviction. Whoa! Okay. Even though Hadler is a sack of trash, I gotta respect that. Uh, that is a good point. Yeah, that's one of the few times where I see Mr. Vin talk with someone else with any sting resembling a bit of gentleness. It is curious just the way you teleport it away. I mean, they have no choice but. Yeah! That's what I was thinking! Yo, I said that at the same time I said that too. But yeah, they really have no choice. I mean, while that's considered, if there's a unified human front against the Dark Army, that's going to make things a lot harder. So they got to take a... Aww. <laughs> Man, that's about adorable the way she greets some um, crocodile. <laughs> In the wall, casually, too. <laughs> hmm. I think she will hit it off pretty well with Kronk and I. I like the way he pokes at it as if it's a freaking toy. I mean, Mam is pretty charismatic. I could see who doesn't. Hey, I think Pop is a fine catch himself. I think Pop is epic, handsome, smart. I love him. But then I could see why he could rub off some people the wrong way, though.
You know, the CGI that they're using for the armies doesn't look that bad, but it is noticeable, though. But as long as they don't have the main combatants in CGI, like the Soma Spider, so what Isekai MA um, is doing, then I'm fine with it. Oh. Refractor fit. Yo, that technique looks so damn cool in that mid episode title card. Dark puppetry aura hand. And that thing looks cool. After a month, it looks like bungee gum from the Hunter Hunter series. Yes! I always love seeing um, Leonia. And honestly enough, it looks beautiful. Well, hey, at least she gathered some leaders, though. That's still better than nothing. I think Leona can give herself some credit. Ah. Oh. Fuck. I'm also hoping for more good news at the very least. Dush. I like the way she bats for a boy to die. <laughs> you know, like the small things like that. That's cute. And I like this too because at least the. Oh, fuck! Whoa! Okay, now it's building up the mythology towards gods now. I dig it though. Hmm. It's a shame, but I guess there's not going to be any HD solutions for die. Oh, it's been a while since they've shown her off. Oh, that's fucking adorable the way she's excited to help out, Pop. Aww. It just sucks she stands no chance. She's a beautiful lady, but Pop's heart's already been taken by men, unfortunately. Alright, hopefully it's something that's not going to be too difficult, but there's nothing easy in this series, so I highly doubt that. Lanny, Kitty, Kitty. I'm assuming it's going to be an easy village to get to, or a village with some dicey elements in it. But I wonder if there's a magical barrier or something. <clears throat> Maybe he came from that village. Oh boy! Oh, yeah, so that means if he'll probably left on the worst of terms, then. Not the worst of terms, but less than op optimal terms, is what I should be saying. Oh! You know, I like it how they didn't um, tell who was intended to make, like, a bullshit fancy. Not fan service but a scene where, like, a woman hits some male just because they accidentally end on them. And not on purpose. I like that. Even though this is based off an older manga, shows you that the writer... Oh, that's so damn cute. Oh, but that hurts! Don't get me wrong, I'm on the pro. Mam and pop shit. I like how he's hiding behind... Freaking man, this is fucking cute. Don't get me wrong, I'm on the pro man and pop ship, but I like Meryl too, though. That's why I still feel bad. Childhood friend? Oh. Oh, his mother. I'm guessing the mother, because the look. Aw, oh, <laughs> All 
well, at least they're happy to see each other. Aww. Yeah, no, that's the type of family dynamic I love to see. Whoa! That's not a way of bringing your son there. Yeah, that dude definitely looks like Pop. He's gonna punch him? Oh no, never mind. I thought I remember. Okay. Oh! Okay, so he's gonna hit him! Okay, at least now we know Pop didn't get his uh, physical strength from his Pop. I got it from. <gasps> yeah! Oh, yeah! I like how Meryl stuck up for Pop there suddenly. I like how he's in disbelief when they're talking positively about Pop. <sighs> ah. Whoa! Oh, okay, this is sounding pretty nice. And like how they built up to this too in a previous arc in the series. That's nothing that's going to happen to Lombardicolo, or hasn't already happened. Hey, you know what? This is not to mention nothing gained. Aww, I'm going to sing because of the way his weapon was utilized. Oh. I mean, maybe that could prove his power but in some way, shape, or form. Because Dai is like the ultimate wielder of all times. Well, he could be one of the ultimate wielders of all times. I'm assuming the man's been through some shit. Maybe if he breaks one of the swords utilizing the dragon quest. I think that's going to make him inclined of actually making a weapon that's worthy of handling die. Oh! <laughs> that would actually trigger the long broke to actually make something stronger than a dark sword. How can you say no to a guy that could be the best wielder you've ever seen? I like this. It's going to give Dom Broke a motivation to actually build a weapon, not just him making a weapon just because. <laughs> oh, this dude. I mean, I guess I could see why he'd be happy about that. I mean, there's always room for improvement when it comes to the weapons. I'm assuming now he's gonna go. Yo, okay, I love this man. Whoa. I don't. Yeah, I'm assuming the same material ain't gonna be easy to get. Hey, it's only fair. Hey. I mean, he's already going to take the tough chance. I mean, hey, they got something to build it. It's still better than square one. More like square two if I'm being specific. Hey, I like how it's going back. Hey, that's something that's really not convenient with the way they can just travel around. I like how the grounds are probably thinking, man, you just came here asking for some shit. You don't even greet your grants. 
Damn! Yeah, shit! Just made up it. But then again, boys be boys, though. And that's what I like about uh, this series. Yes, that is mature for his age. But he does do boyish things sometimes that also demonstrate his age. Makes him more realistic than already was to begin with. Well, Mr. Green looks so fucking epic. Damn it! But hey, you know what? I don't mind waiting another week for Dragon Quest Adventure of Thy Greatness. Now, if I had to rate this episode on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm definitely going to be giving it a... On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being invisible, 5 being average, 10 being exceptional. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Was it a bit rushed? Yes. I would have loved to have seen... Long conversations between both Pop and Pop's parents. I feel like they breezed through that a bit too quickly because I'm like, I would have loved to have seen the people, well, more of the people that raised Pop to become the man he is today. But, I mean, I guess I can understand why. They want to probably save time for the important shit. But still, though, I can just feel that it was a little bit rushed. Now, them rushing the scene where Pop sees his grandfather, uh, that's... I understand. I mean, that's got important shit to do. He won't have time for pleasantries. That makes sense. But other than that, the episode was good. It was nice to actually get to see Chio get the glory he deserves. Getting some credit. It was nice getting to see that, yeah, the guy in the cloak was Mam and Chiyu's master. I thought it was obvious because I'm like, this dude knows way too much about Mam's abilities to be just any random Joe. And he ended up being more than just a random Joe. So I lo oh. Oh, it's looking like things will be crazy. Yo, it looks epic! Yo! Next week cannot come soon enough. It looks good. So that's something I enjoyed about this episode. Even though I'm burped, I love how he actually has a realistic motivation because his motivation and wanting to help out because he finally has a wielder that can handle any blade that he built was actually nice because at the very least it ain't just, oh yeah, let me just help a hero because he's just a hero. No, it does more than that. And that's why I thought the script writing for the episode was good. At least gives Don Burke a bit of individuality, and he was given build up a few episodes ago, so it doesn't feel like this series is pulling things out of its ass when it comes to Don Burke. He was a character that we knew about ahead of time. He was a character that's been hyped up, and so far he's living up to the hype. I love a hilarious personality, too. When he's like, oh, like, what the way his eyes lit up? Like, the moment he found a potential wielder, he looked like a guy who. He looked like a kid. Who went into his candy into a candy store for the very first time in the life where the kid's parents are telling the child, Hey Johnny, you can pretty much purchase anything you want from you can get anything you want from the store. And that's the type of face that the dude was making. If I had to link it up link it up to something. So that's what I thought from a character standpoint it did good. I love how you see Meryl much more you see her inner thoughts regarding Pop, even love how she sticks up for him. And I love the fact that, yeah, she acknowledges why someone like Pop would fall in love with Mam, too. That was also really nice. Sad, but it's like telling us straight up, yeah, Meryl stands no chance from a romantic standpoint. But regardless, though, I do love how they're utilizing Meryl in the narrative, at the very least, in helping locate people. Because at least here, in this series is showing us that it doesn't forget about characters. It'll introduce them in early episodes, and then it'll have them do some stuff later on. I like that. A lot of anime struggle introducing characters. No, but yeah, they struggle introducing characters, then having anything to do with them. I like how this series it always utilizes its grand expanding cast to its biggest advantage. That's why I also loved the script in this episode. It was pretty damn fucking good. And uh, the character running was good too. Regardless. Now, if I had any complaints, yeah, the art definitely looked a bit less detailed than usual. I gotta admit. At least in the non-action sequences, because when Pop was thrown into the floor, or when she was running, the animation looked good. But I gotta mention, the artwork did look a little bit inconsistent here and there. I'm assuming it's because now that it's 37 episodes in, it's 
Toby's probably running into some production issues because we did have a, lot, a streak of high tier episodes back to back to back. So there were naturally going to be struggles eventually. But regardless, this series still looks better than some of its con contemporaries. It still looks better than Shaman King 2021. And that series is on episode 13. And that series has been struggling since episode 3 with its productions. This series is just barely on episode 38. And just barely I'm noticing that there are certain scenes where the art's slightly off model. But overall though, at least the animation quality looked good when it needed to look good though. Like with the slamming or pop being thrown down into the floor. So this episode when it needed a scene to pop, it made it pop! And the, the vocal performances are great. And that's why if I had to rate the episode on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Because I think it, it serves it straight up. And yeah, I'm definitely going to be reacting to the next episode. Oh, show. But anyways, y'all. These are my thoughts on Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die, episode 38. I'd really love to hear your thoughts and how I feel about my reaction. Or the episode itself in the comment section below. Hope y'all rate the video, share it, comment, or subscribe, and I will see y'all later if you come back for more, because I'm definitely pumped to see what they're going to do next. But anyways, y'all, thank you very much for watching my video, and have a fantastic day, everyone. Bye-bye.